Hello again. Now in this video I thought I'd do something network related for a change. So I'm going to show you how to set up a port mirror on an HP Aruba switch. But instead of monitoring it on just a spare port of the switch, we're going to send that to a remote host. In this case a machine running Wireshark and we'll look at the packets there. Okay, as it happens, I have an Aruba switch here, which I'm going to use for this, and I'm just going to use an access point as a, as a host, but that can be anything, a Raspberry Pi or any network host. We're just going to monitor what goes through the port that it's connected to. So I'm going to plug it into port 39. Now, it's just sitting there at the moment, but I'll set it up so port 39 gets sent to the machine running Wireshark. Okay, now on the config for the switch, I want to define a remote uh, host to send the frames to, which it's supposed to be another switch but we're going to send it to Wireshark. So anyway, on the switch, go into conf, we're setting up a mirror, call it mirror1, I'll just do question marks for you. Remote is what we're setting up, IP. Now this IP address here is the source IP of where it's coming from on the switch, so the VLAN IP address that you want to use. So for mine it's 1.2.2.1. Next is the port, I'll just use any, 1.2.3.4.5. And this is the destination IP address which theoretically is supposed to be another switch, but again, it's this computer running Wireshark. So 1.2.1.2. Now it says there's a remote switch being configured. We're not using one, so we'll just say yes. Okay, so that's the mirror definition set up. Now what I want to do is apply that to the port that I want to look at. So it was port 39 that I'm going to plug that in. So now just go to interface 39, go monitor, all, both, because I want both directions, uh, and mirror one, because that's what I called it a minute ago. So now it'll send all the traffic on port 39 through to this uh, IP address on UDP port 12345. So what I'm going to do now is set up Wireshark to capture just UDP port 12345 and see the traffic coming in. So if we go to Wireshark, just do a capture filter, UDP port 12345. Okay, now there's nothing coming in because I haven't plugged it in. So I'll go plug that in and we'll start seeing traffic coming into Wireshark. Okay, now that's been plugged in, that port's active, so traffic that's uh, going through there, even if it's just broadcast or whatever, will be uh, coming to this machine here. So you can see it coming in now here from that uh, switch's IP address. But at the moment, the data's a bit of a mess. You can't really make any sense of it. So what you want to do is just pick one of those and decode as. Now, UDP port 12345 we want to decode that as HPERM. And once we do that, now it starts looking like network traffic that we expect. And if I want to look at that AP that I just plugged in, I assume it did DHCP to start with, I can just do a good old filter and see, oh, there was some DHCP. So I see something there got an offer of that address. So now I can just filter by that and start seeing what's going on. Okay, now that that AP's booted up, I can have a look at what we captured. And you can see, as I said at the start, it starts with DHCP, then goes into stuff like uh, your key exchange, ESP packets, all the stuff you expect between the AP and a controller here, which I know that address is. And it just goes on from there. So you can see that there's, there's comms happening. The AP's probably up, which I know it is. Um, and look, GRE stuff. And of course you can filter, same as always. If you just want GRE, just look at GRE. So that's how you set up a uh, remote port mirror for a switch. And it's very handy because you don't have to do much physical, like go to a data center or, or mess around with extra cables. Just do it remotely, send it from there to a machine running Wireshark, and then you'll see what's going on in your networks. Now you won't see what's going on in your network if you don't do packet captures. So if you really want to troubleshoot anything, you've got to look at packet captures. So until next time, take it easy.